Welcome to this video. Welcome to another video about the Vue.js. In this video, I'll introduce you to Vuex, a nice add-on to Vue.js, which makes state management a whole lot easier. Now, why do we need to make it easier though? Well, I prepared a little example application to which you'll find a link in the video description, which will show you why you might quickly reach the point where you need kind of a better state management than doing it like here. So let's take a look. I opened this project, which again, you can find in the video description. And there I need to run npm run dev. This was set up with the view CLI about which I also have a video on this channel. And if we have a look at the running application, we see we got two sections here, basically two components and one we can register and in the other one we can then unregister. As you can see, if I click here, the counter goes up and we see the date here and everything is great. Well, it's kind of great. Let's have a look at the code. It's a very simple application, as you can tell. I got only two components and my app component here. And in the app component, I'm basically managing my whole state. With state, I mean, I manage my registrations here and my users, the total number of users or all the users I have. And then I manage the state by, for example, if I click in the registration.view file where I can sign up, if I click on this register button here, I fire the register user method, this one here, and this then emits an event, user registered, and passes the user. It also sets the registered state on the user to true. And the user gets into this component in the first place because the user is part of this user's array, which again is passed into the registration component here as a prop. So back to the sign up, we're emitting this user registered event and I'm listening to this here in my app.view file. And when it's fired, I'm triggering the user registered method here and there I'm basically setting a date and I'm pushing a new registration on my registrations array. And I'm basically doing the same just in the opposite direction when a user unregisters. Then I'm firing the user unregistered method and so on. So this is basically my state management taking place in the app.view file and I pass props to the other components and I listen to their events. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that and for a very tiny application like this one that's just perfectly fine. But imagine the same in a bigger application where you have even more components interacting with your users, interacting with your registrations and also with other parts of your application state. So state basically refers to the variables or the values of certain properties, if you want to call it like this, you want to keep around because multiple components use them and the user, the user interacting with your app changes them. For example, I change the state by clicking on register here or unregister. Now, if you imagine that in a bigger application, it quickly becomes very difficult to manage. You have a lot of props and events to which you're listening. And also you got a lot of different parts in your application, emitting these events, changing values. It could quickly become difficult to see what changes things where and so on. Therefore, we have a better pattern, actually a whole add on which handles this. And this is Vuex. Now in this video, I want to show you how to get started with UX, how to set it up and how to use it in its very, very basic and not yet final form. And in the next videos, we'll enhance this application and use more and more features of UX to finally get to a point where we can say, yes, now we're using UX as it should be used and our state management is much clearer now. So let's get started and let's set up UX. For that, I will go to the console, to the terminal, and run npm install dash dash save, and then it's simply Vuex. That's the name of the package. So this will pull it down, add it to my package.json, and install the 2.0 version, which is the version which I need. And with that, I now need to set it up. Now I could do that in my main.js file, uh, but a better convention is to do this in a store.js file. So let's add a store.js file. Why store? Because Vuex is all about having a central store which holds your state and which allows you then to manage this state in the end. Therefore, I call the file store.js and I will create a store there. Now to create it, I will first import view from view and I will also import Vuex from Vuex, this newly added package I just installed. 
The first thing I got to do is I have to add UX as a plugin via the view use method here. This will unlock some additional properties and methods I can use. And then I need to set up my store. I will export it because I want to use it outside of this JS file and I'll name it or store it a constant named store. The store is then created with the new keyword or operator here and then viewx.store. So this viewx package we're importing up here has this store object or constructor we can instantiate here. Now to the store, I need to pass a JavaScript object configuring that store. Now, how do I configure such a store? The key thing every store has to have is the state. So this state property, this is a reserved word kind of Vue.js or Vue.x to be precise, will recognize. So this is my state and this is now also a JavaScript object. And here I could have my users and my registrations. So let me quickly grab them from my app.view file. I'll cut them, store and add them here. And now I'm setting them up here with initial values. So the empty array for the registrations and the array of user objects for the users. And with that, I'm already using a store, though of course the app is now broken, but we'll fix it. First, I need to go to the main.js file and of course here I need to import my store. So here I will import store from the store.js file and then I need to add that store to my root view instance. I do this by simply adding store colon store or since we're using ES6, I can also take the shortcut and just add store and it will automatically assign store to that since it's the same name. With that, the store is set up in the store.js file. We registered the initial state or the state in general of that store. And now we, of course, added the store to the main root view instance here, this new view instance here, which manages my whole app. And with the store being registered there, we can now access it from inside the application. So let's do this. To access it, I will start with the registration part. So here we're, where I can sign up in the registration.view file. Right now in the register user method, I'm simply emitting an event and I'm getting my user as props here. Well, we don't really need to follow this pattern anymore because the app.view file, which is right now passing users via props and listening to the event, doesn't need to do that since our users and our registrations are in the central store anyways, we can just access this store directly. To do so, I'll start with my users. I'll remove the props in my registration.view file and instead add a computed property in the computed um, property of my view instance of this component. And you can give it any name. I'll stick to users since this is the name which I'm using up here in this v4 loop. Users, again, is a computed property. And all I do here is I return this. And now here is a special property you can access. Dollar sign store. This is added because I am registering view x here with view use. So dollar sign store gives me access to the store. Then I access the state. And here, my users because state users is what I'm setting up here. So I'm now accessing this array of users in my registration.view file. Now with that accessed, I can go to my app.view file and get rid of this prop binding here where I'm passing the props, the users props. I can also already get rid of the event because I will also change the way I handle this. Here, what I wanna do is in the methods, I don't need to emit this event anymore. I simply want to, I can still set user register to true right now, but what I want to do here is I want to also access the store, the state and here registrations. So this empty array at the beginning. And there I can simply copy the logic from my app.view file where I also have my user registered method. I'm copying that code from that method into my registration.view file, paste it in here. And now I don't want to call this registrations push. Instead, I want to push it 
on the registration in this state in my store. Now, I will say one thing right away. Manipulating the store and the state in the store like this is not a good practice and not how you want to do it in bigger applications. I will, of course, in the next videos, show a more elegant way. But for now, this will do. With that, I'm changing the registration state. I can now get rid of user registers here, uh, registered here in methods in my app.view file. And I can now also go to the registrations.view file and implement some code here. So instead of getting props, I'll also add my computed property here. And here I also want to get my registrations in this case. And registrations is also fetched from the store state and there the registrations array, just like that. I need to return it though. So this gets the registrations from, from my global store. Now when I unregister, I can go back to the app.view file and copy my user unregistered code, like this. I'm going to the registrations.view file and I'll simply paste it in here. Now I need to make some adjustments though. For one here where I find the user which was changed, I need to access this store state users and find the user by its user ID, which is saved in the registration. I can then switch user register to false again. And here, this registrations splice where I remove a registration. Well, here I need to access this store state registrations. And the same is true here, this store state registrations. Now I also need to change the computed total property. Here I need to go to my store, state, registrations and fetch its length. With that all the logic is in the two subcomponents and I can get rid of the methods here. I can rid of my com get rid of my computed property here and also get rid of data which I didn't use. And I can also get rid of the prop passing and the event listening in my app registrations component. Now let's see if this works as it should. Uh, it probably won't because seems like I got the import in the main.js file wrong. And indeed I'm exporting a constant named store. Here I'm importing something like if I had defined it as the default export, which I could do, but since I created a named constant, I need to wrap this in curly braces. This is just ES6 import syntax. With that, if I save this, Let's see, this looks good. Application seems to run, let's click on register. Well, it goes up here, but we don't really see the registrations here in the registrations component. And we also get an error that property or method registrations is not defined. And uh, this happens because here, I got two computed properties set up that of course won't work. So let's merge them into one. That was a mistake on my side. So let's save it. Now we should see a working application. Indeed, I can register users. I can unregister them. The missing piece though is, you see, they don't really disappear here on the left. They somehow don't seem to get marked as unregistered or as registered, excuse me. And the reason for this behavior is not a bug. The reason is here in my computed users property, which defines through which users are looping, I'm always returning all users. Instead, of course, I need to add a filter here and filter if the user actually is registered. Or to be precise, if it is not registered. Only if the user is not registered, shall it be returned in the user's array in the end, which it will be for which I'll loop. So now, finally, we'll have an application which works as it should. Now with Vuex and the central store and state. Now, what did, what did get better compared to the start of this video? We stripped out all the code from the app.view file, which makes this file more leaner because the code shouldn't be in there, to be honest. We basically put the code into our to our components, but the important thing is our state the registrations array and the users array is kept in one central state, our store here, which we access from both the components. And we don't have to emit events and pass props and so on. So this is an enhancement, 
Though, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, for small applications, the setup might actually take longer than simply using the props event pattern, which we did at the beginning. But especially in bigger applications, you will see the advantages of this approach. Now, in the next videos, we will refine this approach and add some best practices because the way we're doing it right now isn't really the best practice, but I'll come back to this in the next videos.